Hey, 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 everybody. This is Shantae Parker from Shantae Parker Real Estate and Bennett Realty Solutions. I'm just coming to you live today because this is, for me, day 12 of club quarantine. Um, I just wanted to give you an update as to what's going on with me and my family personally, what's going on with me uh, professionally, business-wise, um, and just overall my thoughts on what's happening. Um, I'm sitting here waiting for my daughter who is um, getting physical therapy. So her physical therapy office is still open because I guess medical facilities are essential. Um, so she is getting the proper treatment that she needs for her back injury. If you, you weren't aware that she had a back injury, she injured her back um, back in December from a swimming incident. So she actually didn't even swim this season because of the back injury. So um, she's been in therapy now for a few weeks um, as she was preparing for crew season. But we found out yesterday, as many people did, that Maryland schools are closed until April 24th. So that's pretty much the crew season, as well as her junior prom, have been canceled. So what's up with us? So um, I guess 12 days ago, because that Friday is the day I took my mom to the doctor, we um, had health scare at my house because my mom was who was 74 years old was coughing and wheezing um and having shortness of breath and it was very scary because she had basically had a lingering cold for about a week it started the saturday prior to this friday so we took her to kaiser urgent care made an appointment um online because you couldn't even get through with phone calls made an appointment online and when we got there and i chose the rockville office just because it was far and i thought maybe it'll be okay when we got there they wouldn't even let us in to the to the facility um they they read her symptoms and they basically said stay in the car do not come in here we don't want to infect other people and so you know went back and forth i was basically arguing and being an advocate for my mother saying you know she's sick she needs to see someone she needs treatment and so they kept saying okay let me see what i can do let me try to get her doctor on the phone and so finally, after 20 minutes of sitting in the parking lot with my six, 74 year old mother, they finally said, you know, you can go to the Gaithersburg um, urgent care. So they wanted, cause they have the facility and the structure to infrastructure to deal with this. And so they didn't even know if she had the coronavirus, but they were treating it as such. And so we drove another 15 minutes after driving all the way to Rockville, which is basically an hour from my house on a Friday morning. Um, to go to Gaithersburg. So when we got to Gaithersburg, it was a ghost town. There was no one there. Um, there were people there, but the way they had it set up, they did not want people to um, enter, you know, mix with one another. So we got to the desk, we gave her, it was like some chairs. You couldn't get close to the person who was taking the card. Um, we gave her the card, the lady had on gloves and a mask. Immediately they called us in, didn't see anybody, not a soul. Um, and they took us in the room. They put the sign on the door that basically said infectious disease do not enter and it was totally like a quarantine situation so um what they had done is so the doctor came in the doctor had on a full hazmat outfit um and i had on nothing i had on no gloves no mask no nothing um although i thought it was serious i didn't realize it was that serious and so the doctor like literally tiptoed in and she was like you know touching my mother like you know not really wanting to touch her staying far away as she could and she basically told us that there was no corona test available for my mother because my mother did not have all the symptoms all she had was two of the symptoms which was the coughing and the shortness of breath she did not have a fever she never had a fever in the whole week um so what seemed like the con and also my daughter who is 15 i mean what am i saying 17 <laughs> was sick also but well, my daughter has allergies severe allergies and also has asthma so i took her to the doctor first um that monday after just three days because hers can go into a real bad asthmatic cough and so my her doctor basically gave her strep test flu test like every type of test they didn't give her a corona test but because her her coughing was more productive and more like bronchitis it was um not bronchitis it was more like a cold because it was mucusy it was it was productive you could hear rumbling when she was um coughing and stuff versus my mother was a very dry cough so ultimately they basically said the cdc said they can't test anybody even though she's over 
um, 65 and she displayed some of the symptoms and she had a compromised immune system. She had Crohn's disease. They still couldn't give her the test. And I'm like, but well, does she have to be dying in order to get a test? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, if we don't know what's wrong with her, she's had this for over a week. We need to give her the test so we can at least rule this out or give her some kind of test. So, so finally, after a bunch of advocating and you know, I was, you, if you know me, you know that I don't play and I'm not going to, I was not going to take no for an answer. So I kept, I mean, we literally was in there from nine 30 until two 30. So they gave her, so they bought the blood person to her. They bought the x-ray tech to her. They gave her chest x-ray. I was like, if you're not going to check her for Corona, we're not leaving until you check her for everything, everything else. Cause we need to rule out stuff. They checked her blood. They gave her a chest x-ray cause they wanted to make sure she didn't have an upper respiratory infection or bronchitis or pneumonia. They gave her a flu test. They gave her a strep test. We got every test we could get except the Corona test. So we waited for like an hour and no one was coming. I'm like, what's going on? My mother was, oh, she also had chills. My mother was freezing cold. So I kept going to get these warm blankets that they had and was putting it on her and everything. She had to go to the bathroom. They wouldn't let her come out the room. They like pushed the door and kicked the toilet in and let her use the bathroom because, you know, at this time, this was, you know, March 13th. Everybody doesn't even really know what's going on as far as Corona. We don't really have that many cases in Maryland. Um, but eventually the doctor, I, I just kept on saying, where's the doctor? Like how much longer do we have to sit here? Like we need to know something. So, um, at least tell us what the results of the test you took were. So finally, um, they said, well, okay, well, since you've been sitting here, the doctor came back in, the CDC has changed this rules. And because she's over seven, over, I mean, over 65, and because she has a compromised immune system with the Crohn's disease, we're now able to give her the test, even if she doesn't have any symptoms. I'm like, really? Okay, perfect. Give her the test. So they come in and they give her the test, which was a nasal swab. So I don't know if you're familiar with the test is, it's similar to the flu swab. The flu swab is a long, looks like a Q-tip and they basically put it all the way up your nasal passage, damn near in your brains. <laughs> But the Corona test looks like kind of like that thing you clean your toilet with because I can't, can't don't have any other or you clean a baby bottles with. It has like those whisk things on it um, and it's much smaller and it was like a silver color. And they basically just swab the inside of both nostrils um, with the same swab. They swab both nostrils. Um, the guy who came in completely had on a hazmat outfit as well. Um, he was not as afraid of her as the doctor was. Um, but everybody had on a hazmat outfit that came in the lab tech, the person who did the x-ray, x-ray tech, everybody. So except me, I'm sitting there with nothing on, no gloves, no nothing. Um, and I've been in the house with her for a week. So, and I have no symptoms or anything. I never got a cold and never got sick. So, uh, and I hardly ever get sick. So, um, what was scaring me though, is that they were saying that you could be a carrier. So my daughter's school, which is in Bethesda. Uh, a lot of the kids who go to that school and a lot of the parents had attended that church in Georgetown where the pastor had been had tested positive for coronavirus. So her school was already making several, um, taking several precautionary measures. A couple kids had traveled. So I think people at her school may have been tested, but they never revealed to us what the results were. And my daughter told me that a couple of kids got literally walked out of school because they had been out of town. They had been, you know, overseas. Um, and so, or they had been to that church. And so I was really nervous that my daughter may be a carrier for the virus and possibly infected my mother. The only time my mother ever left the house is when she went to Kaiser, the one in Largo, to the pharmacy to pick up her medicine. And she sat in there for like an hour. And everybody was sick in there, coughing. You know, that's before you knew, like, cover your mouth. I mean, you should already know to cover your mouth, but people were just sick in there because it's, it's allergy season and it's flu season. So the only possible place she could have got coronavirus was from us being carriers or from Kaiser because she didn't go anywhere else. Well, then the agony began because now we have to self-quarantine for 14 days is what they told us. So, or until you get the results. Well, the, the coronavirus test takes forever. So that's one of the reasons why I believe people are getting um, effect, affected in such a large volume because there's so many more carriers than there are people who actually show symptoms. And so, and people are getting it. Like DJ um, Easy was tested the other day when I saw his video and saw him on a respirator. I was like, oh my God, like this is getting like really close to home and it's extremely, extremely scary. Um, 
I watch videos about Amazon people. I'm watching the news. Like I'm watching the CDC website. I'm trying to stay as abreast on it as I possibly can. Well, when by the time Wednesday rolled around, five days later, my mom got her test results. The doctor actually called her and told her her test results was negative. Um, and then I noticed, I thought about some things. While we were in the doctor, she never coughed, not one time in the whole seven, eight hours that we were there. On top of that, um, she displayed the chills but that's pretty much all she had while she was in the doctor and so um i don't know some miracle came and she was healed but she basically displayed no more cold symptoms maybe it was you guys prayers so many people was praying because i was doing updates um along the way because it was very scary to have an elderly parent that you take care of and to know that they may be sick and have something that compromises their life was just very 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 scary and so thank you for all the prayers all the well wishes all the check-ins so many people have called me to check on her to see how she's doing and i appreciate that because that is community that's goodwill that's love that's support and i need that my family need, needed that at that particular time and so i've been very um thoughtful and in prayer um for the whole world um not just my own family not for the people that i know who've been affected by this my my uncle lives in Seattle, Washington, where it's rampant there. I have family members in California where it's rampant there and friends. Um, I have a client that I'm selling the house to right now who lives in California. It's just crazy. And so I, I literally have not left my house uh, only when I need to leave my house. I, I just came out of the grocery store. There's so many people in there. Um, I live by the Wegmans in Lanham and we there has not been meat in there all this time that I've been going to the, I've, I go to the grocery store like once a week, um, maybe, but I've had to go like maybe twice a week, but they, they, there, there's literally not been any meat in there. So literally I've become a vegetarian because I've had to eat what they had. Um, and so it's like this whole virus thing has really made me a much more thoughtful person. Like we have not thought about how clean we really need to be or how dirty and infectious things actually are so i'm literally obsessed with washing my hands with cleansing my phone thank you daryl for that video because i was thinking the same thing yesterday um wiping down things um you know making sure i haven't coughed or sneezed but when somebody does it around me i'm looking at them like what are you doing <laughs> like because i just think the coronavirus is gonna jump on me i've been so scared and so now to talk about the amazon workers i've been uh ordering stuff amazon is my go-to and when the grocery store didn't have anything i couldn't even get anything off of amazon prime we started running out of paper towels and toilet paper i didn't understand the obsession with all the stuff from the grocery store like why is where it's not an armageddon folks we don't have to buy everything in the store um leave some for someone else that's the kind community you know let's rally together thing to do like why are you buying all this stuff that you know you're not stuck in the house governor hogan did not say you cannot come out for essential things but we shelter in place means only leave if it's absolutely necessary and that is what i've been doing and so what i wanted to say to you guys today i just in the grocery store i saw maybe four elderly people um by themselves no one helping them one lady, so cute, was standing in the longest line possible. I was like, ma'am, can I help you? Let me let me help you um, go to the shorter line and help you with your stuff. Um, and I helped her with her stuff. Another lady was trying to put her mask on and her gloves in the parking lot. She dropped her purse. I got her purse. I went and got her a basket. I cleaned the basket off for her. You know, being a kind, good Samaritan, like just be kind and be thoughtful of the people you know who need us the elderly need us right now because they are the population that's the most affected by this and i've been thinking really hard about like what can i do to be more helpful what can i do you know i'm in my nice comfort comfortable house sheltering in place but what can i do to be helpful to others and so i'm still you know trying to figure that out i i would love to you know go to the grocery store and buy groceries you know for someone who can't get out if you know somebody in maryland dc or virginia you know maybe you can order an instacart on wegmans or um, one of these grocery stores i go pick it up for you and take it to your parent or your elderly aunt or family member i would love to do that um hey meg hey guys <laughs> um i would love to do that because we have nothing but time on our hands and I want to be a vessel. I want to be a server of service. I want to be a person that cares about other people. I am a person who cares about other people, but I want the actions to show it. Um, and so 
that's all I can think of right now. If you could think of something else that I could do, you know, say it in the comments below because I would love to try to do, you know, maybe we could do it as a group, keeping our social distance, of course. But we need to think about our elderly and how we can help them. Because um, I know just being in the house with my 74-year-old mother, she's not, she hasn't been eating like normal. And if she lived alone, would she be eating at all? You know, would she be eating healthy things? Would she be concerned about drinking water? And like, I'm literally reminding her to do everything every single day. I'm making her food. I'm taking it to her. I'm, you know, I'm making sure that she gets up every day. And, you know, like drive, staying in the house could drive a person crazy. And I, God bless the people with small children. You know, the, the, you have to be in total prayer for patience. We need to be in prayer for you too. Because I used to be a teacher for 22 years of five-year-olds and then went down to four-year-olds. And I would have multiples at a time, 20, 30 kids in a class at a time. So I completely get it. Anybody who has a small child right now, how their attention span is short, how they need to be entertained. So if you need some help with that, if you need a whole school plan, hit me up. I can give you that as well. Um, also, Daryl, you're right. There are kids that are starving. There are many kids. When I Every school that I worked in was, an, was a low-income school, and we had kids that their only meals was breakfast and lunch. So when people tell you that, that's really serious. Kids will come to school just to eat. There is a huge homeless population of kids who eat at school as well, and those um, people, they can't get out to get the food. So maybe that's something we could do. Maybe we can, um, you know, deliver food to or, 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 I don't know, find a place to help with the, um, the food delivery or the pickup of the food for the children. But that's what I wanted to say today. I'm well. My mom is great. My daughter is great. Uh, besides her back, she's great. I'm trying to keep her on a steady plan because it's very easy to get off track. Um, so she's getting up every day. She's making up her bed. She's taking a shower. She's getting dressed. And I have given her a schedule of things that she needs to do. Um, so she's doing work. She's studying for the SAT. She's reading. I'm also giving myself a schedule because I don't want to get off track. I still, I still have a job to do. There are plenty of clients who still want to look at houses. I have a lot of um, contracts that are in play right now, homes that are, on the, that are on the market right now or under contract. So I still have to do my daily job, but I'm also using this as an opportunity to be better, to think about all the things. I've never had this much time in, I don't know. The last 17 years since I became a parent. And so to have this much time on my hands, I'm trying to be grateful for the time. I'm trying to um, be in a position of gratitude where I could just thank God every day that I'm I'm well, that I'm healthy, that I'm, I'm able to wake up. I'm able to have this opportunity to do better and be better and reinvent myself, reinvent my business, you know, spend quality time with my mother, spend quality time with my child. You know, I think that your, your attitude changes everything. How you look at something, you know, yes, this is scary. This is, this is awful. This is very, very scary times. Happy birthday, Tanea. Very, very um, awful times. But if we stay in a position or a posture of gratitude, gratefulness, if we, if we, be, if we remain kind to one another, and if we think about um, how we can reinvent ourselves, how we can be a better person, how we can start a business maybe that we hadn't done before. Or maybe we can read a book that we always wanted to read. Don't sit and watch Netflix all day. Don't sit and just lay in the bed all day, you know, eat snacks all day. You know, try to do something better. You can go outside, go for a walk, you know, go for uh, a, a grateful walk where you just walk around and think about all the things you're grateful for. I ordered me and Sakai a grateful journal a long time ago and never wrote in it. So we've been writing in our gratitude journal, you know, every day, get up and think about five things that I'm grateful for. And I write them down. And then the rest of the day, I write the things to do list, And I'm very, very structured in what I do every day because I don't want to get off track. You know, I don't want this to set me back. I don't want this to set my business back. I don't want to, um, I don't want to, um, gain weight. I don't want to leave here as a leave my house as a as a good year blip. I want to be healthy, mind, body, and soul, and spiritually, I want to be well. And so that's really just all I wanted to say today. Um, you know, real estate. I guess I should talk about that too, because since I'm a realtor, people are still buying houses. People are still wanting to go look at houses. And at first, I was very, very scared to do that, but that is my job. Um, and you know, you got to think about the sacrifice in that, like for my client to ask me to show them houses, it's like, you know, I understand they have a goal and they have something that they need to do. And so how can I do my job, but be careful doing my job? 
Hey, Casey. <laughs> hey, Levita. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Joy. Hey, Wendy. So I, you know, decided to do my job, but to be very thoughtful in doing my job. So I have gloves. I have hand sanitizer. I have a mask. I have Clorox spray in my car. I have trash bags in my car. So I have shoe covers. Like whatever I need to do, that's what I'm doing. Um, to be careful. So the real estate business has not stopped. I know that I had posted before about the interest rate going down, but honey, they didn't went back up. So the interest rate is back up. The, the economy is very rocky, but the one thing we can always count on is real estate. I can tell you that the, the thing that I have worried about the most, because I am very worried about the service workers and people who are not working right now because everything non-essential is closed down. And I, I think really hard about what if I didn't have a job you know, that is perennial, that is always going to be here and it's always going to last. You know, being a self a entrepreneur or self-employed person is very difficult, but I work it. And so I feed myself. I constantly have a salary coming in. But what if you don't have a salary coming in and you have to rely on unemployment? I don't know if you know, but unemployment is not that much money. It's very, very little money and most Americans can't live off of it. And so I... Just want to thank all the people who are my clients, who I currently work with, who are still, you know, working with me and we're still pressing forward. I don't want you to think that I've given up because I haven't. I'm very positive and we will all get through this. Um, we will all get through this. So, you know, let's say a prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us, Lord. Thank you for taking care of us, Lord. Thank you for keeping us healthy, Lord. Thank you for being the almighty, Lord, and all the power resting with you. God, watch over us, protect us, keep us, Lord. Continue to wrap your huge arms of healing and love around us, Lord. Help us to continue to build a sense of community. Help us to be there for our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our family members and friends. Lord, just thank you. I am so grateful. I love you. I magnify your name every day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, guys. I love you so much. If you have a comment, please leave it below. And I appreciate you very much. Stay well, stay healthy, and stay your tail indoors. Bye.